Hey, this is India with Bags and Lifestyle. Thank you so much for watching this video. I think even though this video is a little bit different from my regularly normal scheduled content, I think it's very important that us as women and even guys out there that are watching my channel too, because I do have some male subscribers, we share this type of information, especially trying to share this amongst, you know, we are online friends. So we need to share this information because some of this started or sparked by conversations i've had with my closest friends and we put actions after we had those conversations we put actions into place to set ourselves up and so i'm so proud of where we've gone our conversations and how our friendships have blossomed into having these conversations that we all need to have so let's go ahead and get into it as you can see from the title we're talking about financial lessons i am not a financial expert or anything like that However, there are things that I have learned, whether that's through conversations with other people, my own research, or just learning from what my parents have taught me. And everybody does not have that same exposure to those type of conversations. Everybody does not have the same type of conversations or have that same exposure in their lives. And so I want to do what I can to share the information that I have, because what we want to do is share this as early as possible so that way we all can be setting ourselves up to do better than the generation before us so and set the next generation up after us okay so we're just going to go ahead and get into it if there are any other tips anything else that you all want to share especially my folks that are in the finance industry industry but even if you're not throw those in the comments down below because i want this to be a resource for our community we have to have some of these conversations we love handbags we love fashion, but we do need to set ourselves up for our future as well as generations coming after us. So I'm going to get off my soapbox and just go ahead and get into it. All right. So the first thing that I wanted to share, which is a financial lesson that I've learned is to start investing as well as saving as soon as possible. First off, I just want to let you guys know that where you start is ultimately not going to be where you finish and do not feel like because you have a smaller salary now that you can't start saving you may not be able to do everything at the same time but if you work on little increments as you improve with your pay then you are already setting yourself up for success and you may not be where you want to be when you start but you definitely can get there if you start so that's going to be the first thing is figuring out a way to pull some money aside. Now, you should also be able to enjoy yourself, have fun, but what you do wanna do is make sure that you are planning for your future. Now, whether that's talking to a financial advisor or just starting really small with just setting yourself up, setting up a budget and figuring out how you can save money. Also, while it's still enjoying the things that you enjoy in life, you can, you can do both and just make sure that you're, doing small increments. Um, one of the methods that I have used that has been very, that has been very helpful for me is pulling amount, a set, a set amount to go into my savings account. I used to have it set up with my previous company where I could, a portion of my check automatically got deposited into my savings account and we can no longer do that anymore. So now what I do is I have an automatic timer set with my savings account that's linked. And then I just have that money on that date. Actually, I think I have it set the same day I get paid, pull it over into a savings account. So that way I don't even see it. And soon as you, if, as long as you don't see it, it's helpful because then you know it's piling up, which is, is, which is really helpful. And then you don't have to manually do it yourself. So if you set up tools like that to save, those are, those are easy to set up and, and kind of set it, forget it and, and forget about it. Also, what I started doing as well with my retirement account that I have with my job is to, as I get raises, each year I give my retirement account a raise. So also that's something else that I try to set up. Now, obviously, if depending on what your income level is, you may not be able to siphon away only but a little bit, but that's okay. The little bit counts, especially when you start at a young age just like just get started is the most important thing i want to say so that's the first point 
The second point I want to make, which I have a notebook so I can remember to tell you everything is, you want to have a plan to grow. Like I said, where every time I get a raise, I also give my retirement account a raise. And I actually already have it set. Set it and forget it. As many tools as you can set into place to just put it in place and it goes so you're not having to think about it is very helpful. So I have my retirement account when it pulls my check every, every time I get paid is to pull that percentage so each year that percentage goes up and i automatically have it set that way so i don't even have to think oh let me bump up my allocation it automatically does it for me another thing is and i've already talked about this before which is you won't be able to do everything so for example when i first started my job i had savings set up and then the year after that i started planning for my retirement so i had those start those set up and started pulling money things like that and then i started eventually at a time like setting up the the push or setting up the match all of those things just do it in little increments for what you can manage and step by step you'll get there and you'll feel better about what you're setting in place things uh, insurance let's talk about that so i am so thankful that my my friend and i had a conversation back in our early 30s about retirement i'm sorry about life savings life i can't get my words out about life insurance so both of our jobs we were blessed to have jobs where their benefits were to provide us with life insurance and it was to basically like cover the salary our salary of you know, something happens to us. So what we talked about, and I don't even know how we got on the topic, but we were talking about where, you know, this day and age, people quit jobs, who get laid off. Like you're not at your job for the 10, 20, 30 years at a lot of times. Or even if you are, let's say for some reason you get laid off after you've been with a company for 15 or 20 years. We're a lot older then. And so getting laid off from that company or deciding to leave that company and then having to, have life insurance cover what you previously had benefits for with your employer means that you're older, your rates are higher, things have changed from when you set it up when you were 28, for example. And so we talked about getting life insurance and having that be the bulk of the amount outside of our company. So that way that transfers with us wherever we go because it's tied to us and not tied to the company we're with. And so both of us put that action in place. I'm so thankful about that because I set up life insurance. So when you can set up life insurance outside of your company that you work for, for the very reasons that I talked about, let's say all things work out well and you stay with your company for 20 or 30 years. Great, right? But then when you retire or you decide to leave or whatever the situation is, you are that much older, which means that setting up a plan outside of that at that point becomes more expensive. So being able to benefit from that at an early start is very beneficial. To build onto that, what I have slowly started doing with the life insurance policies that I set up like 10 years ago is they had options to convert them to whole life policies. So as I have been over the years making more money, you know, we've been converting those plans over to whole life. And like I said, this is where you use that incremental strategy. Long, whole life is very expensive. Even if you start at like 30, it's very expensive or 25 is very expensive. So, and a lot of times people are not coming out of their, coming out of college with a high paying job. So that is very intimidating, I feel like, or daunting to deal with. So now that, so you wanna kind of think ahead, put a plan in place. So you want, if you can, to do a kind of term life policy for the time being, and maybe that's a small term life policy. When you make more money, get a larger term life policy to add on to it. So just as you do it in increments, you can always do it like that. Maybe take out, if you can only afford a $30,000 term life start with that and then in two years you're making more money start then add another 30 40 a hundred thousand dollars like however it works for your budget because you have to keep this up that's the main thing you got to keep it up so don't be lofty and then you can't keep it up uh three months from now <laughs> but then with that you want to think about being able to convert it so 
that way that policy that you have let's say you are able to take out a five hundred thousand dollar term life policy and then maybe every five years you take seventy five a hundred thousand dollar chunk of that and convert that from your term life to your whole life so eventually maybe you have at some point all of that five hundred thousand that you started with in term life in whole life so think about it in that way think about it in those chunks and if you think about it that way where you incrementally do it then it does make it at least a little bit more manageable with your finances as they grow the other thing you want to think about which is something that my financial planner was mentioning to me was looking at long-term disability insurance so i am thankful that i'm blessed to have a job where that's one of the benefits that i have with those plans though it either covers i think like i would say somewhere between 40 and 60 percent and so the logic he was using was that you know if you think about it this way it is great that you will get 40 percent of your income for example let's say it's that but if you do become disabled for the long term is that going to be comfortable for you to live off of only 40 percent of your income and so i have a long so even though my job covers I think my job covers 60%, then I also have a policy outside of work that covers the other 40%. So then that way with the two policies that I have, if I do become disabled for a long-term period of time, I have not lost my income. I will have 100% of my income covered. So that is also something to think about and plan towards and add to your kind of plan to protect your income strategy, basically. <laughs> and... So I talked about that. Yes. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is where I'm also in the phase of all this converting and all of that as well is I, my, my husband and I do not have children. So we absolutely think about our nieces, our nephews as our extended children that we don't have to take care of every day, but we absolutely want to make sure that they are set up for success. So what we have started doing with the youngest members of the family is setting up a whole life policy for them. And this was something that I actually had a conversation with what, my same friend that I was talking about earlier when we were talking about life insurance years ago. Same conversation because they were setting up their daughter at an early age. And so also I heard it thanks to Alicia on Living Fearless. She mentioned this as well, where she talked about things that they were setting up for her son. And so for the youngest members of my family that are kind of under the age of five, what we're slowly doing with, with each of them is doing whole life policies. So we have one set up for one of my nieces, now the youngest one that we have in the family. And we have a whole life policy set up for her. So that way, when she gets of age, and it's very affordable at this age. <laughs> and so um, when she gets to college age, if she decides that she doesn't want to go to college, then she can take the money benef the, the cash benefits from it is what they call it and put it towards a business if she wants to. But at least like there's a policy there that's set up, even though it's a small amount of money, it's a, a policy that's set up with cash benefits that is going to at least help be a stepping stool for her. I'm also talking with her mom about also doing a custodial account for her. So that way, the money that she's generating for her birthday, Christmas, that type of generating, the money that she gets gifts for, for her birthday, Christmas, those type of things, seasoned person, <laughs> seasoned person wants to give her money, whoever wants to give her money, then she could take that and start investing into index funds at her early age. So that way, small increments like that at a super young age, make so much of a difference and the compound interest will be so beneficial to her at her age where she's less than one we want to do the same thing for one of my other nieces as well to get her set up too so those are things that we're slowly trying to do with the younger youngest people since it's less expensive and then if we can grow it out to the rest of them we got a lot of nieces and nephews so there's a lot to get through. So we're just going to start with the small ones now and maybe we'll get to the point where we can do all of them this way. But those are some things to think about. So if, you're, if you have kids or are planning to have kids or you're in the boat with me where you're not choosing to have children, but you have children in your life where you want to do some, like leave a mark that's going to set them up for success, 
these are some options or ideas you can start working through for those folks as well. I truly hope this was helpful. I hope there was something that I mentioned that either maybe it sparked something in you to go ahead and get started or you've learned something. Either way, please go ahead, like this video, comment down below. I am not a financial expert by any stretch of the imagination, but these conversations are so vital, so important to share with each other. So any other tips you guys have, throw those down below. Thank you so much for watching.